Christ, I mean. All right, I'm back with another Destiny 2 video, and as I said before, I'm going to be talking about Agar's Scepter. Agar's Scepter? I think it's Agar's. Uh, the new exotic trace rifle that launched yesterday with a new quest. Uh, we've been doing this quest for a couple of weeks now. We have to go find all this Atlas skews around the Dreaming City, uh, which are kind of annoying to find considering we haven't had to <laughs> navigate the Dreaming City for a couple of years now in any meaningful capacity. Um, today, or this week, we had to do one last set of skews, and then it kind of transitions into a more, mm, I'd say, old school, normal exotic quest where it's just sort of like do a bunch of activities and farm a whole bunch of uh, astral things. And uh, Evie, you coming? Oh, there she is. Okay, she wants to get in on the action. She's been missing from a couple videos, so got to get her in when we can. Um, and then you're just kind of running three strikes that you can just manually pick from the, the uh, director. And then you do one final kind of boss encounter, but it's mostly just to um, test out the weapon and see how it works. Uh, so we know that it also has a catalyst, which I will get into soon. And yet uh, we can kind of see how the weapon works so far in PvP and PvE. I will be uh, running some just generic strike footage here as you choose something in the background. So, <laughs> uh, in short, this is one of the best ad clear exotics in the game, probably. Um, it is up there. Granted, it's special weapon, special ammo, so it's not quite. It's a little different than like Sunshot or Trinity Ghoul in their current states, but um, the amount of kind of chain shatters and explosions you can do, especially when you are running a stasis subclass is pretty wild like it is it's insane to me that this weapon and salvation's grip both exist as ex like stasis exotics like it just doesn't make sense this is also way better than cryostesia um the I, I don't even know like how it's how these weapons are all in the same league like cryostesia you kill an enemy and then you do a charge shot and you freeze an enemy and like this trace rifle just chain freezes like infinite amounts of enemies on repeat like i don't it's not even close to the same level of of capability like it, it's so far above and beyond that um so this is great in, in pve i in higher end pve content maybe not because it might take uh, too much more ammo to kind of um stasis down red bars and yellow bars when there's such a higher power level but in like kind of more quote unquote normal content uh it is very good <laughs> it is uh, a lot of fun and it triggers all of your stasis aspects and fragments so what you can do is you can do some pretty crazy builds where Especially in like Hunter, where you're you're spawning those stasis uh, crystals all the time, or whatever they're called, the fragments that um, give you melee energy, and then they can give you an overshield, uh, and so you're just constantly getting those because you're constantly exploding enemies with this thing. Uh, and one of the other bonuses it has is stasis final blows um, give this gun ammo from the reserves. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> so uh, you will kind of equip it and find that it's fully loaded because you will. Either when you're holding it, or I think when it's when it's stowed too, you will get um, it will automatically refill if you get stasis kills. So that can be with your subclass, or that could be with another. I was gonna say it could be with another stasis weapon, but the only thing that would qualify there is uh, the vorpal or not vorpal. What's it called? The linear fusion reads regret, um, which is stasis because anything else would have to be in the stasis slot, uh, which this is taking over. So it's mostly for killing things with your stasis subclass uh, and running around doing that. Um, the, the, the clear potential on this thing is wild, like I clearing groups of scions and <laughs> like multiplying take on, taken scions with this is extremely gratifying. Um, you can run it without a stasis subclass and yet uh, in doing so you're kind of handicapping yourself because you're only getting a tiny, tiny bit of the benefit. Because like, keep in mind when you, you can trigger four things at once when you use this gun just from the, the aspects you're using or fragments where you can trigger uh, the effects you get on on shatter so like if you get the uh, whatever they change the weapon damage one to where it's like it just boosts all your stats for like 10 seconds um you can trigger the the melee recharge the overshield on shards and you can trigger um i think shattering uh a crystal can give you grenade energy like it triggers almost all of those for all the classes and it's synergistic in a way that almost no other weapons are um with that said this does not seem very good in PvP, which I think everyone is grateful for because no one wants a freezing stasis weapon running around dominating PvP and freezing everyone and chain freezing people and whatever. Like, the damage just doesn't seem great um, compared to other, even other trace rifles. 
and the situation where you will actually be freezing people with it. Like if you could, you could kill someone with it, but someone else would have to be like pretty close to that person to get in the stasis vortex field. And then first they're slowed and then they can get away if they want. And then if they stay, they're frozen. And then even if they are frozen, it'd be a one second freeze as opposed to the four seconds you see in PVE. So like, it's just, it's a lot more situational in PVP in that it's hard for me to imagine this becoming like some sort of prevalently used weapon uh, in PVP. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case just from the early use here. Uh, which I think is good, and I think this is how stasis weapons should be designed, because as soon as we start having weapons that consistently freeze people in PvP, that's a nightmare. Uh, that is not happening so far in um, PvP right now with Cryostesia, or obviously no one uses Salvation Script for any reason. Uh, headstone, I guess you can be frozen sometimes if you're unlucky next to someone who gets headshot, but that does not happen very often either. So uh, this is safe, PvP safe, shall we say. Uh, and then the final thing here is the catalyst. And the catalyst is its own category of kind of insane that I need to talk about here. So, okay, so the catalyst is not out yet. Um, for whatever reason, this seems like an oversight. It, it's not dropping from Astral Chess until next week. It's not linked to the higher difficulty version of them. That is not the case. It just, for whatever reason, they're not having it go live until next week. Uh, and I guess if you want, people really think everything is spoilers. So if you want to avoid Aegir's catalyst, or Aegir Scepter spoilers for the Catalyst. You don't have to listen to this part, but here's what the Catalyst does via data mining. Um, this is not a story thing, so I don't feel bad about data mining stuff here. Uh, okay, Aegir Skull Catalyst drains super energy, overflowing the magazine and empowering the beam with bonus damage and the ability to slow and freeze targets until the magazine or super energy runs out, or the weapon is stowed. can only be activated when super energy is full. So this Catalyst is essentially a super for your weapon. I've never seen anything like this. Uh, I, I assume you will activate this by like holding down square or something like how you, um, or whatever, reload for alternate fire modes like we see with uh, Hard Light or Lord of Wolves or Cerebus. Like I assume that's how you activate it. And it's not just drain super energy. It's like your, your super has to be full. So you are using your super to power this ability. Um, and it, it overflows the magazine. So who knows how many rounds it gets. It's at like 90 something right now, so I don't, maybe does it double it? I don't know. Uh, and it empowers it with bonus damage and the ability to slow and freeze target until the magazine or super energy run out. And I mean, we don't know what the bonus damage is, and yet to cost your super, like even potentially your whole super, I, I don't know how long the magazine will last or how long it will drain super energy, like that better be doing a bunch of bonus damage. Um, this seems like a very, very high concept catalyst that could either be insanely broken if it's very good or insanely bad if it's costing your super energy and this is not really delivering an effect uh, that the uh, the equivalent that your super would be otherwise. Um, I, I, I can't tell how it's gonna be until we know exactly how this feels to use. And yet this is a far, far cry from what we've seen from other um, catalysts for, for trace rifles or where it's just like, better stability or like it's you know the other ones are, are pretty basic uh and so it's this is one of the most extreme changes i've seen with the catalyst it gives it like essentially an entirely new function um like so some things like trinity ghoul catalysts are, are they significantly change the weapon but it doesn't really fundamentally like change the nature of that weapon it just makes it easier to to trigger its effects whereas this is like totally it's it's completely new functionality and i am very curious to see how this goes my gut feeling is that this probably isn't going to be worth it and it won't be very good um at the cost of your super because of how valuable super energy is for so many different things uh, i can see that being true both pvp and pve and yet can't really know until we um get the full picture of how this feels and we get the catalyst to drop next week i don't know if there's like steps of the catalyst that are going to be above and beyond just like normal kills, but I guess we'll see. Um, in short, this is a very fun exotic. I feel like this is very useful and good in most PvE content. Maybe not the case in higher, higher end PvE content, uh, given that uh, trace rifles are not exactly the most meta at the moment, and you will be needing um, other exotics and things for various encounters, whether that's raids or grandmasters or whatever you're doing. But in kind of moment-to-moment -moment play, this is a lot of fun, and I certainly suggest you go through this relatively easy quest and get it, and we will see how wild this catalyst is next week, but 
Uh, anyways, that's uh, kind of all my thoughts on Agers for now. Um, I'm just using it to have fun with it right now, and then we will see where things stand next week with Catalyst. But all right, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Take care.